Okay, we're going to create a feed burner account here now and then add our blog to our feed burner account. So to get there, basically, we're just going to type in the address for feed burner, or if you are in our Moodle environment, you can actually just click on it and it will automatically go there. As you can see, it brings it up for me fairly quickly because I've already been there. So when I click on the entry, and it takes me to what looks to be a main Google screen. And if you have a Google account already, you basically can sign in with your existing Google account. Even if you've never signed in before, it will still let you do that, and it'll just create this as a part of your uh, Google suite of tools. And if you don't have a Google account, you're going to need to create one as part of your Google Reader. So um, I'd suggest you go over to that video first and to that section and view the video on how to create a, uh, an account there. Once you have your Google account and you can just sign in here, you will see that in my case, I already have a feed that I have subscribed to, or that I've claimed, I should say, or as they say here, burned. Um, it's the feed for my blog, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type another blog in here, which I maintain, and I'll see if I can remember the address here. And once I've got that in there, I'm not a podcaster on this blog, so I'm not going to click that. Um, for the purpose of this course, as we will probably do at least one podcast, you may want to click that there. What that essentially does is this button here would then index it up on iTunes so that it would be indexed there so people could find your podcast, but that's entirely up to you if you want to do that. Again, this particular blog doesn't have one, so we are going to not click that. Uh, so I'm going to click on the next button here now, and if I've remembered that address correctly, which I have, as you can see, it tells me that there's two feeds here, so we can look at one or the other. Uh, I'll just pick the default one that it, it comes up with and leave it at that. I'm going to click next here, and as you can see, Google is thinking, and it's giving me some more options here. I can actually give my particular feed a new title, but since that's the blog's title, that's fine. And it'll give it a feed address, which is, I would just work with the default there, but if you have multiple blogs that have similar names, you can name them differently here to help you remember them. Again, I'm just going to leave it with the default, and I'm going to click on next here. What that essentially allows you to do is if you wanted to share that feed with others or you could actually add it to your RSS reader. Um, that way you could see your stats in that RSS reader. For me, I tend to go directly into FeedBurner and look at my stats there, although it's entirely up to you how you would do it. Um, I find it a little bit better going to FeedBurner directly because it gives me everything I need there. So I click next again and it's going to give me a whole bunch of options here that I want. Uh, here's the things that it will automatically do and here's some other options that I can actually put in there. Um, for me, again I don't need the podcast one so I'm not going to click on that, but I will click the other two options here because it's always nice to have more stats than what you really will need. So this way you can collect uh, as much as you want and choose to use which particular ones uh, are of interest to you. So again, I'm going to click Next here. Again, Google is thinking for me. So it will go here, and now it says my feed is ready for the world. So I could actually share this with other places, um, and it'll go through and tell me the different types of things I can do with that. It's interesting to read through and see the ability that FeedBurner will allow in terms of yours. Um, what I would tend to do is basically just go to the Analyze tab, which is the first of the tabs at the top there, and it'll actually go through, and in this case, because it's very new, I've only actually gone and just added this feed. There are no stats here, so it says the feed is so new. Um, and this is Google Sensei Humor. We're still playing with the bubble wrap here. So as people start to go to your blog, you'd see that you would get uh, additional stats. Uh, as an example of that, let me go and pull up the feed that I've had here for a while, this Virtual School Meanderings feed. And what this does is this actually allows uh, you to see a lot of things. So if I look at this feed, for example, in the past month, I've had approximately 149 subscribers. That's been the average throughout the month. Um, this reach category says that I've had a reach during that month of 53 people. And if you don't know what reach is, you see this little I button here. You can click on it, and it comes up. And it tells you that the reach is the total number of people who have taken action, meaning have viewed or clicked some of the content on the feed. So what they've done is they've used 
feed burner to subscribe to my blog and that is how they've accessed the content is by clicking on it. Um, so and it goes through and tells you what some of the popular entries were and I can go and find out more of these. Um, some of the places that you see they're coming from you can see some of the entries here and it goes sort of a day by day or week by week sorry thing that goes across here and I can look at that for you know varying periods of time for specific days um, in addition to that, I can actually look at the nature of my subscribers. So in this case, if you see here, of my subscribers, the vast majority of them are coming through this thing called Google Feed Fetcher. Um, you look down through some of the other RSS tools that people are using. In addition, there are 63 people that have subscribed to the email one. You can even get a sense as to what browsers they're using, at least for the ones that are collecting that. You can see some of the other um, bots, essentially. So these are the automatic things that are actually pulling content of my blog away. Um, some of these would be scrapers or those sites that essentially steal your blog's content, uh, which is not necessarily stuff we'd want, but it does tell us that. In addition to the subscribers, I can go in and actually look at the item use. So um, you can see how many people have viewed specific items, and you can go and see how many items, uh, you know, which specific items are there that they're looking at. So you can get all sorts of inf interesting information from your Google Feed Burner. Um, above and beyond the statistics that Blogger or EduBlogs or WordPress will provide as part of their internal system. And really that's the main re thing that I use Feed Burner for is to use it as a way uh, of keeping statistics for those that have subscribed to it. One of the things that you want to make sure is you want to make sure that your feed burner subscription is available on your website and I think there will be a couple of videos there that will show you how to add that in.